My channel is sponsored by Athletic Greens, which means we'll have an ad from them somewhere in the middle of this video. I have to set up a printer for this video. <sighs> Maybe it's not worth it. Oh. This is very difficult to carry one-handed. <laughs> it's happening. Jesus Christ. You gotta let me plug it in. I've got to unplug it. I'm just trying to find the power in. Here we go. It's right here. Okay. Okay. You're ruining the surprise. You don't know. I was, I was supposed to print this without you being here. And then I was gonna show it to you. It's a big day. You know, you, you're still a little sheltered dog. I'm gonna just drop you back off, put you away where you belong. <laughs> okay. So, my friends, if you didn't already know, the dog you see behind me right here, this, this little happy dog right here, is my foster dog. Banjo. Actually, his shelter name is Bear. Found a very funny fact today that uh, his original name. Wait for this. I think this is hilarious. His oh. original. What? His original name, like the first name that he had. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Who called this dude Anthony? I had made a bunch of videos where I was like, as soon as I can move out of a studio apartment, because I was living in three hundred square foot apartments um because that was all i could afford for the last like six years i finally moved to a bigger place in november and yeah i had set on like videos for years before that that as soon as i could and i had the space to do it i was going to start fostering dogs bear here is a foster fostering um i've had oh i've had three fosters so far and it's really really rewarding i highly recommend it you can foster for a short amount of time you can foster for a weekend you can foster for a month basically it's a reason to get the dogs out of shelters and some people are like oh no doesn't fostering seem cruel what about the attachment the dog has to you and then they just have to go to another home that is better for them than a shelter environment so even if it's sad when you return a foster and it is it is objectively better for the sadness to happen to both of you than for that dog to be stuck in a shelter potentially put down in a lot of cases and if you're interested in fostering you know they give you all of the supplies they give you beds they give you food they give you leashes collars everything 100 percent of the things that you need the shelter will give to you so it's effectively an expense-free way of temporarily renting a dog as well as doing something really nice for the dogs and this little boy it is time to talk about AG1 from Athletic Greens, which is a nutritious drink that can really simplify a very important part of your health routine. One thing that we don't talk about enough, I think just in general, is the importance of vitamins. AG1 tastes good, is refreshing, very easy to put together. You get powder, you just put a scoop into some water, put it into the bottle they provide you, and then you drink it up. Tastes good. You will have seen me drinking them on streams for the past like two years at this point. And it has 75 different ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. For me, energy is very important. I am a low energy person. So sometimes I need a nap by like 2 p.m. And then I do take a nap at 6 p.m. And then I end up trying to stream at 10 and it's just a mess. <laughs> AG1 is so handy for my low energy people, plus people who are busy and on the go. And that's because it contains energy supporting ingredients, a natural form of B12, never synthetic, biotin, bioavailable folate, and magnesium. Instead of drinking seven cups of coffee a day while you're at the office or whatever, you could replace that with something that is much more nutritious and get an energy boost. The best part is it's extremely easy and you can travel with it. Very easy to just take anywhere. All you need is one scoop or travel packet of AG1 and eight ounces of water. That's it. You just put it in, you shake it up, you drink it, you're good to go. So go to athleticgreens.com slash Alana IRL to get started on your order. Athletic Greens is going to give my community a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. What are you doing? He, uh, when I first saw him and I was looking around for Foster's, I think he was the first one I might have asked for. He may have been the first one. I was like, oh my God, look at his ridiculous face. I'll show you the pictures that they have on the website of Bear because it just sold me on him instantaneously. He's the cutest thing on the planet. And I was like, great, let's foster him. And they said no, they said no. He has a uh, hip dysplasia on both of his hips as it turns out. And as a result of that, they needed to do some more testing and find out if it was 
neurological. I mean, they ultimately found out it was hip dysplasia, which is not neurological, but they had to do a bunch of tests to see what was actually wrong with him. And then they did the tests and they weren't sure if he should be in a home that has stairs, which mine does. And so they said no. And I fostered other dogs and I was still thinking about him. I was like, but this cutie though, he's just so cute. So I followed up and I was like, I'm just gonna get a gate. It'll be really easy for me to just keep him downstairs, not let him come upstairs. And they were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but he, it's hip replacement shirt, surgery. So I picked him up. He's a beautiful young man. He's very friendly from day one. And I didn't know exactly when he would have to get his hip replacement surgery, but it ended up being like five days after I picked him up. It was immediate. And that was brutal because uh, he couldn't walk. He was supposed to just stay in a crate with his little shaved hip and his cone. And he wasn't allowed to go outside except to go to the bathroom. He wasn't allowed to go for walks. He wasn't allowed to play. And he's an energetic young boy. So that was kind of complicated. We had to put him basically on a lot of drugs to make sure that he wouldn't injure himself. And so I went through that whole process of watching this young man go from a very happy, excitable pup to uh, a not allowed to walk little excitable, happy pup because they completely replaced one of his hips. This is the most privileged thing in the world. You just get, you just get a, you get a headrest like that. You don't even pay rent. You don't even pay rent. <laughs> and watching a dog go through that process, it's certainly hard not to get attached. And my approach to fostering was always that I would adopt a dog that I felt like I was perfect for, not the other way around. I knew I had him pretty much straight away. I knew I could do everything that he needed and that his life here with me uh, is one of a very, 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 very happy puppy. And that he was great for me. There are things that I need from a dog too. Gotta be cuddly. I love a good cuddle. He's a good guard dog. And a thing that's very important to me. You little rascal. You don't even know what's happened yet. I haven't even broken the news to you yet, Banjo. Oh my gosh. It was important to me that I had a dog that was good with other, <laughs> with other dogs because I don't want to stop fostering. I wanted to make sure that, like, I would only foster a dog if I was like, yep, I'm perfect for this dog. I have this dog's back. They're gonna have a great life with me. There's nothing else that they need that I can't provide them. But I wanted to make sure they were still really good with other dogs and very good socially so that I can continue to foster because that's important to me too. I didn't want to just take in a dog quickly and then stop being able to help other dogs. So he probably can't now coexist with a dog because he's very excitable and his hip is still recovering. But in the future, he'll be a very good foster brother. So the point of this video basically is that after six months with this young man and some weird struggles actually, the thing that drove me to really want to adopt him was that um, the place I was fostering him from, they had to medically clear him before he was eligible for adoption and that meant that while he was in my care nobody else could adopt him but I also couldn't adopt him. And that was kind of complicated because it was hard to medically clear him when you're dealing with a rescue that is so overrun with dogs they're helping and just so clearly super busy that I felt like the support was just going to slow his progress down. I was like, I wish I could just take this dog to a vet to just help him through this. But we couldn't. For insurance reasons, um, you're not supposed to take uh, foster to a separate vet. I also don't even know if you're legally allowed to. You don't technically own the dog. But I was also told not to by several uh, rescues or shelters. So I had this dog that I was like, if I just adopt him, then I can help him foster. But they were like, well, you can't adopt him. He's not been medically cleared. And so, all right, mate. <laughs> and so after long enough of me being like, okay, but if I adopt him, I'll just, I could, I could help him foster, please. They eventually, today, said yes. I'm very excited. He doesn't know you. You're mine, you stupid bitch. You're here forever. You're not going anywhere. You're not, you're, you're not a homeless dog anymore. Not yet. I haven't signed the papers. There's still time. He could, he could really blow this whole ship up right now. So, I finally got his medical history, which I didn't have before. So he was just a foster. They don't give you that stuff. Why would they? And, uh, yeah, the paperwork that told me his name's Anthony doesn't have a lot of medical history. He is a German Shepherd mix, they think. They think he's three years old. I would strongly argue with that, and I'll probably talk to a vet about it. I think he's for sure younger because he's just too much of a puppy. And I suspect he's probably got Border Collie or Labrador in him, but I'm gonna do a DNA test and we'll find out. I'll make another video about that to find out. What are you? 
bad? Pot Grizzly. Definitely Pot Grizzly. Maybe Pot Fluff Monster. Certainly a unique breed. But one that exists all the same. He's such a fluffy boy. But his history is that he was a stray. So probably like abandoned as a puppy. Was given to one shelter who named him Anthony. Was rescued by wags and walks. <laughs> oh, thank you, bud. Who named him Bear, which is fitting. He's definitely a bear looking dog. And uh, I'm naming him Banjo. In part because Banjo is my favorite bear. It's way more for the video game and not at all for the instrument. I'm naming him after Banjo Kazooie. But also because my Labrador, who I had made vlogs about, um, she died when she was four and she was beautiful and it still upsets me and I loved her. But I used to call her Bear as a nickname because she was a chocolate lab and she just looked like a little bear. And so it's, there's too much emotion for me tied to the name Bear. I can't, I still call him Bear sometimes, um, mostly Banjo, but sometimes he gets Bear as a nickname as well. And as a nickname, it feels nice. It feels like there's like almost, this is cheesy and I don't believe in this stuff, but it almost feels like there's like a little part of the chocolate Labrador that has been delivered to me in a banjo sized package. Because they do have a lot of stuff in common. Mostly like the super happy demeanor and how cuddly they are, but yeah, it was just hearing other people call him Bear and having to call him Bear all the time. Just kept tugging at my heart strings too much. Plus, I had never named a dog before. So I also just like, today feels like a really big day for me because I'm a dog lover and dogs have been huge in my family, but obviously I haven't been able to have a dog. I've, I've been living in tiny studio apartments because that's all I can afford out here in California until very recently when the fucking 12 years I put into this career started paying off and I can now afford a slightly larger space. And so it's like something I've been waiting for for like seven years is to have a dog. And today, I'm gonna have a dog. You're mine. You're not going anywhere. You're mine. You're staying here. <laughs> Nobody's gonna take you. And like I said, yeah, it was just, it, he, he, he was just perfect. He was, he was, I was perfect for him. I am gonna give this dog a fantastic life. He still has a lot of healing to do, which is a big part of it too. It's unlikely that anyone would adopt him. He's got a big uh, series of medical expenses in front of him that obviously I'm aware of and preparing for. But that also feels like the right kind of dog to adopt. It's like a dog who is unlikely to be adopted. As friendly and lovely as he is, he's had hip issues his whole life. <laughs> what the fuck? Which is probably part of the problem of why he was in two shelters and, you know, had to be rescued from one of them. And yeah, why he's not super appealing to any other potential adopters. Um, he probably will need another surgery at some point. It's definitely going to be a problem later in his life. And for now, we have to do physical therapy to try to get his, uh, he has muscular atrophy to try to get his muscles back. That printer is about to make you mine. You're not going anywhere. I'll take you, I, I want to take you to the snow. I want to take you to the snow. What are you going to think of snow? It's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. I, I haven't taken him to a beach. There's so many adventures you haven't had. You little stray dog. Okay, it's paperwork time. Okay, we have a contract. Adoption agreement. I already wrote my name on the first page. I'm not fucking around. He's $450? No. Never mind, it's not happening. General conditions of permanent care. We are very grateful you are willing to be a permanent dog parent. To be clear, you are now adopting this dog as a member of your family. This means you will treat him slash her with the highest level of care and consideration as reasonably to expected by us as the rescue organization seeking a safe, happy forever home for this dog. At all times, a safe environment at and away from your home, proper care and attention, medical attention if needed, healthy diet with regular feeding, constant access to fresh water, Adequate exercise and shelter. Dick. None of this dog, no transfer of custody care. You promise to not, under any circumstances, transfer the custody and care of this dog to anyone else, including an animal shelter. This is really nice. They're, this is really good rules. They say we can only give up the dog to the shelter he came from. And if anything of this is breached, they have a right to reclaim the dog. You promise never to euthanize the dog due to financial considerations. If your financial situation puts you in the position of being able to Etc. No warranty. <laughs> You're adopting this dog permanently. 
in as is condition. Oh no, he's too broken. Time for me to sign it. Here we go. Should we go tell him? Hey Benja, I have some news. I have some news to tell you. Are you ready? You've been adopted. You're my dog now. You're not going anywhere. I come to the family. You're mine. But more importantly, I am yours. And I promise that I will look after you and make sure you are a happy dog for the rest of your life. I promise. I'm just gonna go lay in the bathtub. Because of course he fucking is. <laughs> Nice to have you. May the next hopefully many years that we are in each other's lives be 10 out of 10 wonderful. Okay, don't show up the adoption papers. Okay, come on. <laughs>